That was so good, dude. That was so good. I have to take it out so we don't get copyright infringed on. <laughs> we don't get a copyright strike on us. <laughs> Welcome to the Board and Scale Podcast. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Board and Scale Podcast. Battle of the Games. Board and Scale's first ever snake video. It's another vendor spotlight. And the penguin's the only one with any character. What you're likely to hatch when you mix certain genetics. We're going to talk about stuff related to board games in a very calming way. There's no nuclear monsters here, no oversized lizards, just three men. One oversized mole. (laughs) I shouldn't finish that joke. Dwayne's going to cancel our show. (laughs) We have a couple topics to get into today. As always, the intro, the weekly highlights, and then some hand-picked, you know, exciting things. (laughs) By my co-hosts. Can you so, read this? Can you read my handwriting? Cannot. So it's all right. It'll be a surprise. Let's get Stick into around. the weekly highlights. Anyone want to go first? Blah. I'll blah. go first. Why not? All right. Um, I was again. I was stuck, but we pulled it out. Um, it would have been siege. I wish it was siege, but it's not. My play is uh, Mosaic. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I took it. <laughs> hey, I got another one. Got My play is Mosaic. Mosaic is a wow. civilization game um, where you are in what? Europe? <laughs> the Mediterranean. The yes. Mediterranean. Yeah. That's Europe. And each of... Well, it's also Africa because you have... Egypt All different players are a different Numidia. civilization, mm. and you you build out. Um, you're playing technology cards to gain resources. You put your people to work to gain more resources. You can uh, build monuments that will give you points at the end of the game. Um, so it's like Monopoly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, one thing. Two things that I actually liked about it is that one, you don't, there's not like pick a point and spread. You can cut, you can just push shit anywhere on the map. Well, let me take that back. You can start your cities anywhere. Your towns, which are like the smaller pieces, have to go from cities, but you can just plop a city anywhere you want to. Um, Another thing that I liked is that. The uh, is the was the income, which I thought was done very differently. So you get workers, uh, population, and one of the actions you can take is to go to work, and you, it is the number of population plus your production your rate. production rate, and that is how many resources of stone or whatever stone, that you're getting back, food. ideas ideas um but also of course you have money which can be wild uh i feel like as long as you were strong in something you didn't ever feel short so like me i don't think i had i had no resources on my board for like two-thirds of the game I was straight just spending money the entire time. I would get I would get lots of money and I would spend lots of money for resources. Um but like people like Kevin who was producing like 15 to 20 stone on one turn and he had that to spend on his cities and stuff. I just feel like you were never like fuck, I have nothing. I have nothing. There was different routes to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. But I think that the the being able to just plop plop anywhere was, and it didn't feel unfair, like it still felt like you were kind of contesting for spaces. Everybody had access to the exact same stuff, yeah, pretty much at any given time. So like, if somebody were to like put a city somewhere where you're like, dang, I wanted that city. Chances are there's a city somewhere else or a spot, a hex, right? A, 
or if it was a good you're looking for, a trade good or whatever, like there was somewhere else you could probably go. It may have not worked if you were trying to contest a space for, for control purposes, um, but there were lots of options. You never really felt like it got completely edged out. So was it more the timing of things that mattered? Like the timing of when you chose to do stuff? Kind of. So, well, so the, the way that the game works, the game ends after one of two conditions has been met. You've got wonder tiles, um, civilization. I think there are civilization tiles and achievement tiles. And if any two of those sets is gone, the game, you, you finish that round and then I think one final round. And um, alternatively, if there are empire... Was it Empire Scoring Cards mm-hmm. or things what they're called? And four decks have them placed in at, you know, predetermined intervals, but that's random to a certain extent. So, like, you split the deck in half, put it in the bottom half, shuffle the bottom half, and then put the top half on top. So, you know, you're gonna at least going to get through half of the deck um, before you do, you do that. But each of the decks have slightly different builds. Uh, and whenever those come up, you go through them territory to territory. So the game also has a big area control aspect. Um, and that's when you, you whenever those cards come, you stop everything else and you do the area control piece. So, you know, oh, hey, in this province, I have, you know, two cities at two points apiece and a town. So, you know, that's five points, you know, of control. They have one city and a town, but they also have three soldiers. So they actually have six and they, out, they outscore you. So, um, yeah. All I am hearing is that I want to play this game. Yeah, it was good. I've wanted to play it when I, since I saw it on the shelf, and I flipped it over, and I was like, I just want to touch the stuff in the box. Mm-hmm. So I have the Colossus Edition, and Ooh. it is a monstrosity. <laughs> I mean, so I have a um, a Duchess uh, table, which is the just standard three by six table topper, and we left the table topper on. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we actually chose to use the. I chose to use the game board instead of the game mat because the game mat came folded and could not get the creases out. Oh. And I've actually been trying f- for a while, like putting stuff on it and the creases aren't coming out. So if you know some tips to get creases out of neoprene mats and stuff that have been, that are pretty gnarly, let me know, put it in the comments. Um, but one of the biggest differences is, from the Colossus edition is that the player boards and the normal player boards are like, I don't know, like eight inches by like six inches or something like that. And the Colossus edition are like this big, humongous. (laughs) And they're fun. There's lots of space to put all of your things there. They've got these little control dials on the bottom that really help track your your pillars of civilization. Um, But we played with four people and there was barely any room on the table topper. Like, so we'd covered a three by six with just four people. The game plays to six, I think. Six, yeah. Yeah. So, Somebody would have, two people would have had to play on a separate mini table. Well, like what? On, off the table. So I bought for our, whenever we play TI, I bought um, the TV tray tables, the little, little tray tables. I would 100% next time we play. I will 100% bring those out, and players on the corners will, even a four-player game, I'll probably bring them out because you can at least just push your board on that, or maybe it's your pieces, your whatever it is. Just put some stuff off that space, but it is a table hog if you get the if you get the Colossus Edition. Even if it's not the Colossus Edition, I think it's still, there's still a lot going on, but yeah, good game. All right. I would definitely like to play that. All right, Kev, what's your highlight that he stole from you? Yeah, it was going to be Mosaic. Um, <laughs> it can, but that's it can okay. still be Mosaic. It's still, I mean, technically, so no, but I'd like to talk about another game because there are more fun games out there. And otherwise, you know, you got to keep people. Gotta keep people. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give it to my runner up, which will be Skyrise, um, made by Roxley Games. Seen people playing that a lot recently. Yeah. I mean, it, um, I mean, it only delivered, I mean, probably less than a month, month, two months ago, I think. Um, and it's a, it's a very pretty game. The components are done really well. Um, especially if you got the, the one that's got all the, the buildings are ink washed. Uh, well, if you got the ones with the buildings, I, this is one of those games where like, I think the retail edition literally just uses, um, uh, wood pieces mm. and yeah, look <laughs> at his face. Yeah, uh, that's exactly. Um, it's one of those ones where like, it's a fun game. 
It really is. It's an enjoyable game. I don't I don't think I'd want to play it with just the wood components, honestly. And again, that's very bougie, but we've talked about this before, right? Um, it's another mega Roxley production. Yeah, I mean they do they did it really well. Um, but at any rate, the the thing that's unique about so the, it's a it's a bidding game, and you're bidding, um, you're placing cities, and so a player will place a city in a tile either in the center island or adjacent to any other building. And then basically the way it works is that in player turn order, you can outbid but you're moving to a new space. So you're not bidding on the space that they placed it in. Mm. You're bidding on a, on a space that's adjacent to the one that they built. And then whoever ends up winning it turns their buildings. The buildings have numbers on the bottom. And you turn it over, and then that's your space, and you get whatever token's there. Um, and each place has got a different color. Um, so there's a couple different like scoring mechanisms. What's really interesting about it is that like the way the space builds out creates you know, really weird opportunities. Because at first you read the rule book and you're like, oh, it's it's going to be this like starting in the center and blossoming out. Nope. You know, on your first turn, you know, if somebody builds and bids, 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 bids out to the edge of the game, you could have a building at the edge of the game on round turn one. Um, and you can always go back to the center island and build out from the center island as long as there's a place to build from there. Um, but you end up with a very chaotic board and you can create little like little seg segmented areas and whatnot. You can actually create scenarios where no one can outbid you because Ooh. there are physically no places for them to place a legal move. Mm. So there are plenty of spots like uh, our friend uh, Madison like had one turn where there were like three different spots where she could just Shout out Madison. play her stuff. And it's really great because you have really low uh, value buildings. Um, their bidding power is really low. So you can just, oh, I won. You take the thing and you're good. And then because you won the bid, you got the right to place again. So she's like, oh, I won that one. And then oh, look around. Oh, hey, there's another one. And she just cleaned up like three, placed three buildings in a row. But it's not, despite being able to do that, for some reason, it doesn't really feel that unbalanced. I don't think any of us at any point. Like you didn't feel like that was a flaw. No. I don't think at any point any of us were like so far behind in placement like no one had like oh i've got like six buildings out and you've got like two mm. i don't think so anyway there may have been some points where it was a little bit swingy but then all of a sudden somebody else's turn would come on and again based on the numbers that they've got they've got higher numbers they can outbid their opponents um but yeah it was fun um scoring mechanisms are you know you're 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 putting things on your board to make neighborhoods uh worth more for you um there are secret objectives. Um, yeah, wonders. You have wonders. Each person has a has wonders, and there's a wonder deck, so each wonder can have different uh, powers. You know, so there's like twenty different um, ones that you can choose from, like so, Wonderland's War. Yes, precisely. Uh, so a lot of variability for what is otherwise a pretty simple game, um, and of course the board presence is fantastic. Um, it just looks really good. It's really sharp. It's really light. It's not really that complicated, but still has a lot of depth. So, is it really light? I think so. I mean, literally, like I thought it was supposed to be. I don't know why I thought it was supposed to be a big, heavy game. Oh God, no! I mean, I, I might you maybe you would say like like light medium medium, light like medium light light medium like At light when light, light just crushes just just tiptoes across that line into like the the, the medium space it's on like the bottom of the medium mm. and that's really only because i think of like the, strategy well i think so this is a game that i think requires a kind of spatial intelligence like you need to be able to visualize the board unfolding in a certain way in order to understand like all right well these are the implications of me going here as opposed to here Right, because I'm going to start the bidding, and this is potentially how it could go. Or when you're bidding on somebody else's stuff, do I go here? Do I go here? Um, I'm trying to get to this spot. How can I possibly, if not this turn, how can I create a scenario where I'm getting to here? Um, so I think there's a spatial, like if you if you're not a spatial person, if you have a trouble with like spatial reasoning, um, I think it might be difficult. Um, more difficult, probably push it into that midweight. Um, but if you have any, if you're if you're comfortable with spatial stuff, like if you like, I'm even gonna say like things like polyominoes and things like that, where like you're dealing with shapes and stuff and placing them, I think the game would come really easily to you. Hmm. 
Yeah, Sky Rise. Okay. And my highlight for this sec, uh, what's it called? This time period <laughs> since the last time we did the pod is going to be Encyclopedia. Woo! Um, I love the game. Not it is from Holy Grail. No. It is from Holy Grail Games, who is unfortunately defunct now. But I was one of the fortunate people who got the Kickstarter, my Kickstarter copy of it, uh, with all the extra expansion stuff, the add-ons, the upgraded components. And I have liked that game, close to love that game, since the first time we played it. And we've played it probably coming up on 15-ish times now, something like that. I've wanted to win this game so bad, <laughs> and it, it did not happen <laughs> at all until this last time we played. I you We were playing with the events add-on, which really make the game... They honestly add a lot of randomness to the game, so if you don't like extra randomness in a game, you won't like the events. I do. I feel like they keep it fresh. They make you you know, try different strategies. And a strategy that I was able to pull off was essentially grinding out my reputation to just get a bunch of royal seals. And then I ended up with 10 at the end of the game, giving me 40 points if you've played the game. But the game, basically, you're just using drawing die from people's boards, possibly your own, to take an action utilizing the color and the number of the die. That's it. It revolves around studying animals, publishing what you find, all that, whatever. I just love the art of the cards, the animal. I love that it's an animal game especially. I love that the whole thing is based around studying and researching and publishing these different traits of all the different animals. Very cool. And I finally won. I won by six points. So not a blowout by any means, but I pulled it out fair and square. And that's my highlight for the week, Encyclopedia. And if you know someone who has the copy, who has a copy, play it. And if I don't know where you'd get it otherwise. But yeah, that's my highlight. So what's your highlight of the week? <laughs> comment that. <laughs> if it's watching this podcast, that's very sweet. And I'll pin your comment. Hey, look at that. All right, oh, we're going to move on oh, sweet. to the next topic, which I can't read. Yep. So. I got this. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is, I think, one of Dwayne's brainchild questions. Uh Games that we wish we enjoyed more than we do for whatever reason. Games we wish we enjoyed more than we do. Yep. So there's a game out there that you, you, for whatever reason, it just doesn't. You play it and you're like, it's just not doing it. And But there's a reason, there's some good reason out there that you're like, I really wish I enjoyed this game more than I do. I don't know if that's a good reason. But I'll go first, and I hey. think I've said it before. Evacuation for me is a game I was is by Vladimir Suki Suchi Suki however you want however it's pronounced. I'm sorry, Mister Sir, <laughs> but I'm a big fan of underwater cities. A uh, big fan of I can't I can't remember anything that he has made that I've played now for some reason. I'm look, I'll, I'll look a couple up. But big fan of him, and so when I saw Evacuation game, the Evacuation game coming out. And that it was space theme, how and it was basically moving your civilization, your not not your civilization in the way like a civilization game, but like you're moving your population and your stuff from the dying planet to the new planet. I thought it was going to be so cool. I'm sorry. So we've also total sidebar here. We've uh, been looking at some like designers, board game designers, like on their BGG pages and, and being like, oh, like what do you think they look like? Honestly, this one this one tracks. This one, this one feels appropriate. <laughs> Very cool picture of Mr. Vladimir. Check it out on BGG on his profile. Notables. Action shot too. Oh, Praga, great one. Mm. I never got to play Shipyard, but I do want to play it. Oh, there you go. And nice. Underwater Cities is probably honestly. I need to play Praga again. It's been a little bit just because. I, I don't know why we have never played it again, but I do know that me and Kenzie both enjoyed it. Maybe it's just the the Where like monastery setup. There's 3D pieces that you have oh. to set up, and I'm not a huge fan of having to set up like 3D components and stuff like that on a board. Even though I'm someone that complains if there's like not enough to do on a board, but I don't know. 
I did really enjoy the game though, and I want to play it again. We just haven't had the opportunity. But anyways, Evacuation, I thought I was going to love it. I, I can't even really explain it other than we played it the first time and I felt like, oh, the game's over. That's it. Eh, I'll play it again. Maybe it, maybe we played it wrong. You know, reread some of the rules. Played it again. Gave it a second try. No better. No better. And then we played it a third time. I said, you know what? I'm going to try it three times because I, ha I had borrowed a, a demo copy. And I really wanted to give it a shot before giving it back to them. So we played it a third time with three players. And I honestly was like, this was kind of worse. And I don't even know why. I just because I won. Not even that he won. I just get. I just didn't feel any kind of like rewarding. I just didn't get any kind of like satisfaction from anything that I did in the game. And so by the end of it, I was just like, "It's over," I guess. And didn't ended up not buying it, unfortunately. But that's when I really wanted to like. I like. The theme, I like Vladimir as a designer, and I like his other games, at least the ones that I've played by him. So, I don't know. You guys have one? I do have one. Needs no introduction. Unfortunately. Uh, mine is uh, Spirit Island. Hmm. <sighs> For the theme alone, you're these ancient spirits... Watching over this island, hence the name, um, as these, should I say it? Do I say that? Colonizers. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> colonizers. Colonizers. Settlers. Settlers are the bad guys. Right? Settlers, yeah. As these settlers are coming into your island, um, and you have to fend them off by terrifying them, wiping them off the board, and helping your people, you know, just, just get out. Get out of here. You don't belong here. Get out. Get it's out. nature versus man. And it's like, fuck, that is my thing. I, I I love that theme. That's so cool. First things first, it's co-op. Yeah, co-op's a no-go. And I already knew I didn't like co-ops. But I wanted to give it a try anyway because theme alone. Then got to the teach, and about halfway through the teach, my eyes were just glazed over. And I was like, <laughs> ah. And then we got to the play and I was like I I don't know. I don't know what to do. How can I help? Yeah. Tell, hey, and then it just became pretty much people telling me what to do. And I was like, this fuck. Ah. Yeah. <sighs> so I was so disappointed. And like before the game was even over, I was like, I know I'm not ever going to want to play this again. Yeah, well, it's good because it's a trash <sighs> game. So, When's the last time? When did you play it? How long ago? Oh, it was like... Before Brass? Before your heavy era? No. Yeah, must have been because he had... Brass was when we met. Yeah, it's when we all met. No, it was uh, it was before Brass. Yeah, yeah, it was before Brass. Okay, I was going to say hey, before Brass for sure. Yeah, it was before Brass. Okay. The reason I ask is because again, like I've talked about this before, like I've watched you mature as a as a gamer, like moving into more complicated stuff. Like eighteen and, plus stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I firmly like I don't disagree, right? S Spirit Island, despite being a co op, is an absolutely terrible game for I know you're not a new gamer, but like gamers who are new to like complex strategy, right? Um because there is so much going on and it's like, well, okay, these symbols, if I play these cards and these symbols and I use this amount of energy to do this, then you can do this. It'll enable you to do this. But if I do this instead, it'll allow me to do this. But if I do this here, then it messes up your ability to do this here. There's a lot. Mm -hmm. It is really, 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 really a lot. And just like Monopoly. <clears throat> if if you're not if you're not able to immediately like look at everything and kind of like start to, to figure those things out yourself and whatnot. Um, yeah. Players who are more experienced are going to be like, all right, well we can't do this without you. Right. You cannot play a solo game inside spirit Island. So they're going to, all right, Hey, show me, show me what you got. All right, cool. Well, if you play these, you know, so on and so forth. 
And so you... I don't think they're even trying to alpha game you. Like, I wasn't no. there. No, 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 no. It it's wasn't. literally just, hey, right, these are things, you know, like, this is how this works. So I appreciate that that is, a, that is a, not a, an easy game. Um, and all the problems that people have, you guys especially, right, with co-op games, make that experience a lot worse. Like Spirit Island is just not a good example for that. I would challenge, I don't know when you've ever played it. I, I, don't, know, I don't know where that was in your journey. Never. You've never played it? Nope. Okay. I don't want to. Uh, I Stinky. do believe, because like I know there are co-op games that you enjoy. They do exist. Right. Yeah. And I'm not saying that Spear and Island will all of a sudden become like a really fun game for you. I'm not saying it would. But I do believe that if you took another stab at it with where you're at now, I think you would probably have a different opinion. It may still not be a great opinion. Maybe like, you know what? Still not for me. Don't know don't enjoy it. But hey, I know how to navigate my way through it. It'd be fine. Now, nah, do you want to do you want to waste another two hours of your life doing that, <laughs> or do you want to play Ark Nova? Come on. If some if if somebody had Spirit Island and they really wanted to play it, and I was there, I would give it one more shot. But I don't think I would um, seek it out. Mm. I All don't right. think I would say, "Hey, do you guys want to play Spirit Island?" Okay. All right. Um, I'll have to. I'll have to. I feel like I gotta have to curate that one. That that experience. Like Yuck. I have to pick, like hand pick the team, like who who are we doing this with? Not Sebastian. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> nah. Don't ever ever come up to me and ask me to play a co op game with you. I'll play for all three of my fans out there. Mom, I know you're watching. I'll play whatever you guys want that is not a co op. Honestly, I don't know what I don't Would know. Would you play Monopoly before playing a co op? Yes. Yes, I would have Seriously? much more fun in Monopoly. If even if it was like an eight-hour game of Monopoly, yeah, like they tend to be. Yeah, because I don't care about. I would just not care. I would just have fun. It would have to be with a good group. I'm not gonna like play with four strangers or like people who are just gonna sit there quietly and do their turn, you know. But I don't care. Like I, I can have fun with Monopoly, dude. I because I know what the game is. I bet we would fucking and, kill it's Monopoly, and bro. I can talk shit the whole game, and it doesn't matter because it's Monopoly. Who cares, you know? I'll be at FlingCon this coming <laughs> July-ish or something like that. Don't bring me a co-op game. But <laughs> if you want to play a game with me that you can teach me, Monopoly. if I don't already know it. If you lock this man down for eight hours with Monopoly at FlingCon, do it. No. Do it. At FlingCon, I won't do that. But if someone really wants to play Monopoly, Coward. we can set it up at Black Potion or something. But <laughs> Dwayne, he will be available all day for Spirit Island back to back to back. Okay. So all you Spirit Island lovers, I, I actually don't even know. Are you going? Am I doxing you by saying if you're going or not? Going where? To Flincon in July. The summer one. Whenever it is. I don't know if it's July. You might be lying. I don't know. Okay. Are you going? <laughs> you don't want to hang out? I enjoyed my first go. I enjoyed when we went to, the, I, the, yeah, to that other one. I don't know. If we plan it and it makes sense, I'm around. Well, see, that's the thing is it's not like... I, I'm just going to go and take my games that I want to play and see if people no, want to play. Dude, last them. time was chaos, though, because you guys, that was, wasn't that the, the con that you guys were like, hey, there are only tickets available at the door <laughs> and we're going to show up and see if they're available. I already bought my ticket. You did? Yeah. No. For Saturday. What? Oh, you're t are you talking about for the, up for the, the next yeah, upcoming, upcoming one? one. See, we I'm were saying. talking about the last, last one. one. When we were just like, you were like, Hey, FlingCon's like tomorrow. You want to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's different. I already have my ticket. That, that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. So it's like if if it was one of those like that. Like the reason I didn't go last time with you guys, I would have never gone on my own. It's just not my thing. Last time I would have gone with you if we had planned it out, mm. right? But if it's if it's on a weekend, I'm around. My only thing with us going as a group is like it's just us then playing. we're just gonna play a game. So I, I'd be Which cool. Which is exactly why I don't think going All to those cons All of these people are just going to recognize us. No, 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 no. God. Not even that. Table's like, going to get swarmed. Uh, what I'm saying is... Why not just do that at home? Why pay $25 for the pleasure of playing a board game in public? $75. No, it's not. No, it's. I think it's 70 for the weekend. <laughs> I'm not sure. But <laughs> I'm saying even if we all go, go, I would rather stay separate from you guys 
and us each Ouch. just be doing our own thing. Not for yeah. I'm not paying know. seventy dollars to. Do it's that. not seventy for the one day. I think it's for the two so this day. Is the pro- so like, all right. So like, this is this is totally a off topic, but it's perfect. Right? It's perfect. It's the point. It's the point of the pod. What's the point of a con, right? So if the piece that we're talking about here is the gaming aspect, right? Mm-hmm. So you want to go game with strangers, right? You just want to go meet people and game with them. Yeah. Why would I pay for the privilege to do that when I can literally do that at Black Potion anytime? Because it's all the time. Three dedicated days where everyone that is going is going to do that. Black Potion, you don't play with strangers no more. You no, go I meet up with to, your group because I meet up with a group. But if I wanted to, if I wanted to secure an experience, right? If I wanted to do that deliberately, I could go to Black Potion or San Antonio Board Game Group has their nightly rotations of all the different places they go. Gamer Gems, Night Watch, um, I don't remember where else they go. Um, but any one of those meetup type things. Heck, Night's Watch, is it Night's Watch that has the little flags you can put out? Yeah. So like if you want people to play with, you just bloop, put your flag out. So what I'm just saying is like there are free options sure. for that kind of stuff where, yeah, I got the people, the deliberateness of, of a con and going out there and be like, I'm here to do this. And people are probably a little bit more willing to come out of their shells. But I'm not, I'm having a real hard time justifying spending money to do that when they're free. It's options. just an experience thing. That I'm also going to put my games in the bazaar because when I, I took, I went last year with my little brother in law mm. and I took a bunch of games to the bazaar and that essentially paid for my, for my tickets sure. and his and then a little bit more. So I will, I will say that that, I don't know how that works, but that is that would be interesting. So, like, do you just put them out and like put up like a phone number or something? How does that work? That's what I did. They have a, a whole section. It's the bazaar. It's like cordoned off. Yeah. Um, I just put my games and I had a I had printed out a sheet that Prices. just said um, it had my PayPal, my Venmo, my phone number, and and prices. And I just said, make me an offer if you want. So, like, somebody could like literally just pick up your stuff, Venmo you, and. And go, yeah, and and I had that I had that happen multiple times, yeah. Where I I like because my first time I was a little bit nervous. I yeah. didn't really know, so I kept yeah. kind of doing rounds. I'd mm-hmm. notice the game is gone. Open up my app and see, you know, this person sent you whatever yeah. money for this game, and, yeah. And it was what I listed. They didn't even try to, yeah, you know, argue with me. No, I, I think I think that's. That's good. I mean, it's got a space like this. Hopefully, it's not a problem. You don't have to worry about people just like walking out with your stuff. Yeah. But I would be, I would too be very like a little bit worried about it. Yeah, I'd be terrified. That's one of those things where like, and depending on what you got too, like, I didn't have anything crazy except for I had heat in the middle of Mm. when heat was like being crazy sought after. Yeah. And I ended up getting eighty five bucks for it. Mm. Yeah. So. I'm just because yeah, I mean it's a good opportunity to sell stuff, but I think I'd be more likely to, you know, maybe one of those ones where like when they do it a black potion or something like that. But I'm gonna do that one too. Yeah, yeah I don't know because I have too many games. Yeah, I need I need to start getting rid of stuff. But the other problem is, is I got so many big box collections of things that I'm like, all right, hey, it's time to get rid of this stuff and make make room for new things, and I'm not gonna play these games. So. And making the decisions on whether to piece them out or to try to sell them as a as a whole. Honestly, you could make your t- your ticket price back on one game. Oh, well, I know I could. You know, you take yeah. fi- five <laughs> yeah, of those. Or you take five of those yeah. like never to be produced again games that you've got. Yeah. Just take five of them and put them there. Yeah. Well, that's the thing though is is that it it, it comes down to again that's cool. It's a great option, especially with the big box stuff because big box stuff people are like. I don't have to pay shipping. It's here, right? You don't have to pay shipping. You know, um, as opposed to, you know, I can probably get more money for it on eBay. I can probably get more money on B, you know, Board Game Geeks Marketplace uh, or the Facebook groups, things like that. But then you do got to go through that whole process, negotiating. You're wasting a lot of time. You got to find the right box. And if it is a big set of stuff, did you keep the original box or do you have a box big enough? Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just think it's good. And I didn't take any stuff to the bazaar. I will say we went day of. 
So I was like, ah, it's probably too late to bring anything. Um, Cause they prefer that you send an email and say, Hey, I'm going to bring 10 games. Mm. So they have kind of an allotment mm-hmm. for you, right? Like a yeah. section for you. There was still plenty of space. Okay. I could have, I could have taken some stuff, but yeah, maybe we'll, maybe we'll explore it. You and all of your 500,000 bajillion <laughs> games, you can sell them. Yeah, I'd do it. What would you sell right now? What's on the chopping block right now? Oh, Dice Hospital. <laughs> I've never heard of that. What is that? Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I think I already sold that one too. Or it's also in my in the garage in my to-go. Uh, is that one that you wanted to like? Because that was one I wanted to like. I thought it was cool. And then I played it and I was like, this is just God s- procedural. God tier. God tear. God tier. It's God tier? It's God tier. Okay. The, uh, S, S, um, the S, 1v1. SFG. SFG. You have Stone a faction. Games. And yeah. you duke it out. On the I am map. so glad I didn't back that. Because yeah. it was aesthetically, I was like, when I saw it on Kickstarter, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I'd have too much stuff I'm backing. I was this close to doing it as well. But it was basically, it felt to me like Steamforge Games version of hate by simon mm. like you have a group you have a tribe you have a thing or whatever and it's big it's battlefield you fight they fight you fight that's it i just felt like it was too it was doing too much doing mm. too much for what it was probably let me just let me just put fucking minis on this map and let me fight this other guy i don't want to roll 30 dice mm. for each guy and put have the have not a war gamer have all of these separate tokens that are effects stick it on the mini itself <laughs> yeah i feel like games like that they are trying to push that boundary between like war games like hey is this an accessible how can i make a war game accessible to a non-war gamer yeah right but i did not learn my lesson because now i have <laughs> sky tear which i have not played yet um i think that's what it's called it's like a moba oh as a board game yeah i have the card game version of it yeah uh, which is a it's a solo game, but yeah, I have I yet to play it, and I want to. I just have not gotten to reading the rules or anything like that. Yeah, because that one, at least, I've heard good things. Yeah, I and I like MOBAs. I've never heard of. I've never League? heard of it. Hmm? League, League of Legends. That's a MOBA. It was a MOBA. Yeah. Have you played League? Dota two. I played Dota back in the back in the day. Paragon, okay. yeah. old, old guy, league. Smite, back in my Smite day. is good, yeah. dude. I used to really get Smite. Anyways, yeah. What's on the chopping block for you? Chopping block? Oh, so many things. Six Stop siege. it. <laughs> Besides your one show, Six give siege. me one. Oh, is it that one? Well, that's the one from that's last the most night. Recent. So we, we so so we played it last night. So I was a I was one of the 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 unfortunate mythic backers who did pay the ransom and everything, and um. We finally got it to the table. Dwayne had been really excited to play. Now, I have never actually played uh, Rainbow Six Siege, or um, I've only played one version of it years and years and years ago. So the IP doesn't really mean anything to me. But, like, it looked like a good game. It looked really solid. It looked really interesting. And here's the thing. It is. It is a good game. And for me, the problem is, is that there's just too much. So, like, I theoretically could, like, pare down my experience but the way that the boxes are put together and everything it's not really tenable so um is it 11 able <laughs> she's like 20 uh there's so many unique what individual sculpts there's so many different powers and abilities now if you're a player who's like played the games and you're like oh yeah sledge iq pulse these are all things that make sense to you and you read their abilities and you're like oh okay i even understand where some of these things why they make sense um you have context yeah that is so important for this game um and for me it's completely absent so what it ends up becoming is like all right well i have my five people you have your five people i need to understand what their abilities are what my abilities are is it 1v1 it is primarily a 1v1 game you can Mm. play it in team play and arguably you could play it at any team level that you wanted Mm. that you were comfortable with as long as you divide up the team in some way, shape, or share that decision-making space in some way, shape, or form. Huh. So we did 2v2, um, and, you know, it was fine because, you know, 
we're all pretty good friends and we we're able to like, all right, hey, like, what about this? Like, this is an option. This is an option. This is an option. Hey, what do you think? I'm going I'm to you know, pick one. You know, what do you, what do you, you want to do? Oh, okay, cool. And then like, all right, hey, as we're going through this, like, well, we're going to do this. But then somebody knows is, hey, well, how about moving here instead of here? So because of the group dynamic, it worked out pretty well. I think the game is probably actually the rule set is actually probably pretty good. Um, we, I screwed up horrifically. Um, a pretty key piece of the game because uh, I misread one thing and um, that changed our, our gameplay quite a bit. So I think the game is good and I think if there was if I go, if there was a way for me to just like synthesize like hey I could have I got 20 operators like one trays worth of operators you know 10 bad 10 good or 10 attackers 10 defenders I guess. Because good and bad is irrelevant in this game. Um, so fun fact. Yeah. Um, fun forward. It's not. So they are all good. They are all like good in a sense of, you know. Morality. They are working as a terrorist defense unit. So all of these characters are working for uh, Rainbow Six, which okay. is the thing. Um, and what. Siege is is it's pretty much you're just playing training situations. Oh, it's these defenders versus these attackers, okay. and it's one big training simulation, pretty much. So all the characters are are quote unquote good guys. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. So attackers. I mean, that's why. I mean, they do say it's not good guys and bad guys. It's attackers and defenders. It's a very clear language. So, um, but yeah, that's one. Um, the edge. Um, a earlier Awakened Realms game. It's a monst- huge monster of a game. And it just takes up a lot of space. It's also a... It is a... What do you call... I am totally spacing. Like, when you have, like, a variety of cards, say you've got, like, 50 cards to choose from, and you, like, select 30 of them to go into your deck. It's not deck building, because you're not actively building. Deck construction, pre-construction, whatever. So, like, it's it's a tactical skirmish game. And you're picking your units and the cards for those units. And then you go into a space and you fight. So again, what I'm learning about myself. Was that a thematic buy? You were like, this Oh, the miniatures cool. are, oh, they're so good looking. Um, and because the game doesn't sell very well, it's one of those ones where I'm like, maybe I just keep it for the really cool miniatures. Just for the toys. But I've got enough of that already that the chances of getting around to painting that are slim. You got to get a... Um one of those glass display boxes with LEDs. So when a woman comes into your house <laughs> and they see all those painted miniatures standing up really proudly, you know, next to your TV, she'll be like, wow, look how talented this guy is. Yeah, that'll you know? be it. That'll be the trick. Yeah, the edge. I'd edge. be so impressed. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, Sorcerer. Sorcerer and Sorcerer and Bringer. Those are card deck deck games. God, so many, so many games that I need to get rid of. Came at Blood and Sand for me. I think I think I'm just I give up on it. Yeah, they're coming out with a, they got another Kickstarter coming. I out have soon. the expansion for it that I never Blood and Sand opened. Yep, whatever. And I have the big old official play mat. Just chilling, you know. I also have yet to play that. I'm not sure where they are. Have you played Onk? Yeah, I didn't like it. Oh. That was crap. You just don't like Egyptians. There you go. I like Kemet. I just I don't. The the first time I played it, the group I played with was there was a big old kerfuffle, and you know some mean nasty words were said. Oof. Really? Was it like a, a rules interpretation problem? Yes, uh-huh. yes, horrible rules interpret because we had yeah. from the old one. Okay. And it was just like, this power lets you this, and someone read it in a way that was very very strong and beneficial for them, without clarifying in the rule book what that was. So when they were doing, they were buying it so that they could do the cool thing and then we said no you, that's not what that means they were upset <laughs> <laughs> that's what it says no look in the rule book it says specifically blah 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 blah. this is so stupid this is a stupid game i'm wasting my time wow vitriolic and i don't use that word lightly okay <laughs> you don't use that word at all yeah exactly <laughs> And I don't know. I bought the second one because I was like, it's cool. We're different now. We've all matured as gamers. We can play it. 
We'll find the right group. Me and Kenzie, right? Before we met these guys. Not even that I don't think this is the right group. I just personally don't. I don't even care to try it anymore, to be honest. You I don't, don't want to invite that back into your life? Not even that. I'm just like, honestly, like I'd rather just play Ark Nova. <laughs> rather play Encyclopedia. Because again... Yeah. I know Nova, what I like now. Dark Nova, baby. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah I mean, that's there's nothing wrong with that. Like, if you get to a point where you recognize that you're like, you know what, these games aren't for me. And this is the problem. Um, did So, Blood and Sand, did you do that through Kickstarter? No. It was a yeah. kind of a last hurrah buy from when we, when we lived in Maryland. Okay. We went to our local store one last time and spent, like, way too much money. Yeah. See, that's my problem with right now is that I have all of these crowdfunding games that are coming in that were backed by a person who who is very different than the person I am today. Yeah. <laughs> and several uh, years older. Yeah. And well, and again, just I mean, like I have gamed more in the last pick any one month in the last 9 months. I've gamed more in that month than I probably had in any year before that, you know. So, being able to get see more stuff, feel out more games, understand what I like and what I don't like. Um and then like being like, well, yeah, like I backed this game because it looked really cool or the miniatures were cool or the theme was cool, something about it, right? And then now even looking at that list being like, that game's going to show up someday and I may never take and it out of the box. Gonna, you're just going to send immediately that right back out. Flip it. Yeah, there are a couple. There, there are definitely a few like that. Like I just got the other day, I got Primal, The Awakening, big boss battler game. Yeah. And I'm like, man. Nah. I'm like, I kind of want to open it. I kind of want to give it a shot, um, but I'm just not sure, you know. So, like, maybe I'll open the base, get that to the table. Because it's hard to say, make a decision about, like, not playing, like, not keeping a game system without well, even playing it. I'm already 0 for 1 on games that you should open and I really <laughs> want to play. Well, it says the thing, though, is, like, I feel like I I, I can't. It, I don't know if I could get rid of a game without opening it. Like, I don't know if I, I could. could I'm going to do that with like three of them that are coming. Yeah, which ones? Um, one of them is Darkest Doom. I was really excited for it, and it's taken, it's just taken too yeah. long, and, I, and I'm over it. And it's basically, yeah. it's like kind of semi co op. Okay. And I've really solidified. Yeah. I'm no, not a co op gamer. So, yeah. That one's, I mean, Through the Ice and Snow, I shall do that one. Mm -hmm. uh. That one, maybe, depending on the reception, once people start getting it. Sure. So. But you said you also don't care, like, if you're selling a game, if you lose a little bit because it's been played once. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. So I feel like it would be worse at least having the game played. Like, you went through the time, you waited for it. Just at least play it, even if it's not. It's Honestly, it's more the effort of learning the game just to turn around and have no one want to play it or have a horrible experience playing I mean, it. I don't know. When it, we could have just played something we all like. <laughs> I don't know. I I mean, even games that I don't enjoy or whatever, I don't really like, oh, hey, this wasn't a, a fun experience and I don't love my the time that I played. I do appreciate the knowledge that I gained from being like, okay, I did, didn't like this game. Why didn't I like this game? Uh, the game we just finished playing, right? I won't talk about it because we'll save it for the, uh, the, the thing, but like couple aspects of the game i'm like oh these are just some pieces that i don't like and i'm learning again i'm learning that i don't like them but i'm glad i played the game i'm glad i played the game <laughs> really glad i played it i was trying to think right? I was like, hmm. yeah. monopoly <laughs> <laughs> so i yeah i i don't know it would be hard pressed to not play a game now like games like so like i backed Endbringer, Sorcerer Endbringer, which was an expansion for Sorcerer. I'm not opening that because I played Sorcerer and I'm good. I'm good. I don't need it. I'm whatever. Um, the new Sky Tier Horde, the card one, I got an expansion for it. Um, crowdfunded the expansion, and I'm not gonna. Whenever it shows up, I'm gonna package it with the original thing and sell them together. Yeah, because it's a solo game. I just don't. I've also discovered I don't like solo gaming. So, uh, twenty strong. Uh, chip theory games, right? Looks like a fun game and everything, but it's solo. I'm not interested, so it's still sitting in a shrink, and it needs to needs to go. All right. I haven't actually answered the question yet. 
games you wish we enjoyed more? Than me, yeah. I've not got really? I'm not giving you mind. No, because you, you, he we, is not. We, we, right. we detoured to uh, games that we're getting ready to sell. Right. See us out, Kev. I'll uh, I'll do this one real quick. It's a real simple one. Um, Lord of the Rings, the card game, or the LCG. Um, Lord of the Rings, phenomenal, wonderful. Like, I love the IP. I love Lord of the Rings. Um, the art on the cards is really great. Um, and I, you know, the way I was taught to play it was as a solo game. Um, and like my first couple experiences through just weren't great. Um, I was having a really hard time. And then through some coaching and mentoring from somebody who really enjoys the game, one of my good buddies, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I can actually make my way through this. But at the end of the day, again, you've got all these different cards. You're really supposed to like build the decks and it requires you to spend a lot of energy in this one game system, learning the cards and building out decks and trying to create a synergy and whatever. And, you know, potentially if you're playing, like you could theoretically play with a, multiple players um, fighting against whatever. Um, but for the most part, I think people just like do two handed solo, mm. which is exhausting. So, um, you know, I don't have a Lord of the Rings game that I think is really that I played. I, I own a couple, but I haven't played yet. Uh, Battle of the Five Armies and War of the Ring uh, as examples, which are basically the same game, but different. Um, but I just want a really good Lord of the Rings game. Like, I really, 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 really want a good Lord of the Rings game, and I just don't have one. Isn't the um, Dune War for Ruckus? <laughs> Shit. That one. There's a There's a Lord of the Rings game that people really like. And I can't remember what it's called. It's an older one. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I don't know. Battle for Middle Earth. So Battle for Middle Earth. It's a Star Wars joint, actually. <laughs> I'm trying to remember joint. if that's a thing. Because like Battle of the Five Armies and War of the Ring are two two player they're both two player games, big, like slow moving, high strategy, like Risk esque type, but more complicated, more in depth. Yeah, uh, they're very similar. Like to the point where, like, when you buy one, there's this big question mark: Do you need to own the other one? And it's kind of comes down to like, if you like Lord of the Rings, you should just get them both because they're they're different enough that you'll enjoy them both. Um, and both, you get more Lord of the Rings content. Exactly. But if you're like not, or you don't play it very often, don't worry about it. I got my second. I got Battle of the Fire Armies on a ridiculous sale at some point in time. So I was like, mm, why not? So yeah, so that's mine. Lord of the Rings, Collector, the living card game, mm -hmm. trademark, fantasy flight games. All right. And I think that'll do it for this episode, this week's episode of the Board and Scale podcast. If you like co op games, go ahead and comment down below so that I know who to block from the channel. <laughs> If you're going to be at FlingCon, this upcoming FlingCon, definitely comment below on games that you might want to get played, and maybe we can, you know, fi figure something out. But not with all three of us at the same time, apparently. Probably not with all three of us. to a different table. Mayhaps, Exile? depending. Um, specifically, bring Monopoly to play with Kevin. Spirit no, no. Island to bring with Dwayne. And for Monopoly me, was your whatever game. you want. Eight hours, Monopoly. No, if you want to make my life hell... Axis and allies. If you got a copy of Six Siege, <laughs> <laughs> then we can buy a copy of Six play Siege. not <laughs> half. <laughs> wow! I just need to try it one more time. <laughs> but yeah, uh, comment a game that you thought you or that you wanted to enjoy more than you did. And if you like this video, subscribe to see another one. Bye, everybody. <laughs>